Hello once again audience and welcome back to Dominations with Christopher. Uh, this how-to is brought to you by the letter N. N is in Nancy. Today I wanted to cover the concept of where to actually stick your troops in on a base. Uh, we're gonna do this to cover I guess my Greek industrial age base as well we'll pop over to my classical age base and go from there. Now in order to outline this properly, I'd like to actually be able to show you a replay and maybe we'll get to that. But for starters, let's scout my base. This war we're going straight across, uh, being that I am number three, we're going to be going on number three. You can see there that I've already been five starred. Hooray! So picking your drop point is dependent on two things. Um, one, you don't want to be picking a drop point that is going to cause you to be rushed in your attack. You want to allow yourself time to actually get all of your troops down. And the other thing that you want to take in mind is your tactics. You want to allow yourself to get those tactics in there. Uh, so I guess sorry, three things. So getting your troops down, getting your tactics in there, and being able to rally forward. Uh, and what that means is that Say, for instance, you were to pick, this is a draw point right here. Well, you're, it's a good draw point on the basis that there won't be any traps there because this is right against the edge of his base. So that is a good aspect, good point. However, by the time you got your first round of troops down, that would be gone, and those would probably be under fire, and you would have popped his general, and you would also be taking fire from a mortar. So that would not allow you the opportunity to actually get your troops in in the correct order and you would probably be rushed throughout the duration of that attack. So picking a draw point that is more appropriate means that you want to give yourself, like I said, the space between your primary target where you want to focus, what you're looking to kill, and where you're dropping. Uh, there's a lot of troops to be dropped. So I think a better draw point for this instance would probably be right around here. So for this particular base, uh, which I will be attacking later on if you want to watch that video, I think the draw point is going to be right up here. I'm going to go with my uh, shooters first, probably my mercenaries, oh no I don't have mercenaries, my donated troops and then followed up by my supply cart, supply trucks. And then probably my heavies next. And my artillery would be last. And what that will allow me to do uh, is start destroying these buildings here. While I get the rest of my buildings, or rest of my troops out. The heavies will then bypass these ones and head into the center. Hopefully destroying some of these ones. And draw that mortar fire. And last would be the artillery, which will allow my troops to actually catch up and start destroying some of these. Now the first rally point that I'm going to pick, after of course I get all of my troops in there, is going to be, I would say, where do we want it? So there's a double wall there. One, one, two, three, one. So that means I've got to get through there. That's quite an obvious trap location there. So, with that said, hmm, I'm always thinking after I get my sabotage down, and possibly a sabotage there as well, I might want to pick a drop or a rally point such as right there. That will allow me access to snipe that as well. It won't pop the fort. There is, however, other possibilities for this base. You could go down here, but the point being that you want the ability to drop all of your troops before you have to rally or drop any of your tactics. So you've got to allow yourself the amount of time necessary to rally forward with your tactics. You don't want to rush yourself. So, I'm going to go over my last attack, which I think is a fairly decent example. And getting your troops down, I think the majority of people would 
concur that that initial drop point complemented with your tactics and your initial rally is really what makes or breaks a battle. That's what's going to get you the five stars. So, with that said, let's watch this replay. So, I love picking on people that have their forts out. Uh, and my game loves crashing. <laughs> Crashing's fun, isn't it? Say good morning. <laughs> good morning. Oh, there you go. Wow, we got a good morning. Only Alliance leaders can start world wars. Join an alliance or ask your Alliance leader to start one today. Okay, let's see if we can't watch this. We'll go in here. And I find if you actually wait till the battle starts and then scroll around, it works a little bit better. There we go. So I picked my drop point down here. As I was saying, I like going with my artillery to snipe forts that are left out in the open. Followed by my supply trucks. I've got three of those. My heavy tanks I threw in there next in order to draw some of this fodder. And it worked out pretty well. I followed that up with all of my artillery, or all of my, sorry, shooters. And I picked my initial rally point to get them all in here right beside that town center. I was fortunate enough that this guy didn't have any troops actually hiding out in there. And then you can see that they just kind of fan out. I do start taking some damage from the mortar right behind there. I'm fairly positive I throw a protect on those guys after having lost more than a couple of them. Or maybe not. Oh no, that's what I did. I stole his tank. And then of course, for the rest of the attack, you're just really trying to keep your troops focused and together trying to protect that artillery and burn through the base. Burning through a base requires a certain amount of artillery. You have to have a minimum of, I would say, four. Three to four in order to get through. Unless, of course, you're Korean. Now, the other thing about choosing a drop point um, is also it's going to vary what troop composition you have and who you're attacking. And what I mean by that is, for instance, if you have, if you're Greek like me, you might want to go with tanks first. If you do have to pick a drop point that is right in range of a defensive building, you're going to want to go with your heavies first. If, however, you're British, let's say, you want to pick a drop point that is outside of the range of the majority of everything, and you're probably going to have a lot of riflemen. That's right, baby. So let's flip over to my other account, uh, and I will show you another replay outlining a drop point. Maybe? With a classical age base. We're probably going to do this one just live. And it should be ready. We should be good to go. Short of a squidgy baby. There we go. So let's find an opponent and we'll quickly pick what we think is a decent draw point. Um, do we want to pick on an Iron Age? I think we do. So given that I do want to get rid of that, I'm going to pick this draw point here. And that's a single drop point, and that's a double drop point. You can see that I've got two fingers on there in order to get them all out faster. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is probably, once that falls, I'm going to get them all there, and I'm going to drop that heavy there in order to draw the fodder from this catapult here.
So there's the quick town victory. We'll wait for this next rally point in order to actually take out that catapult. Hopefully my guy survives long enough. Nope. Throw a sabotage in there in order to get rid of that. There it is. And those catapults will destroy your little British troops. I've got 52. Um, and the downside to using nothing but uh, archers or riflemen when you're British is that they don't do a whole lot of damage to buildings. But it's power in numbers. This is the equivalent of a Zerg rush. And you're supposed to be napping. That's not napping. That's not napping at all. Kitty. All right, now I'm going to do a little bit of a speed rally here. Try and get my troops moving a little bit better. I've got 50 that have survived so far. And you can see that range is tremendous. <laughs> of course it's right when the kids are supposed to be sleeping. We've got 50 seconds, 55 seconds left, so I think we'll be all right getting through this base. Mind you, it is Iron Age, only a level 17. So really, I don't have any excuse as to why I wouldn't get through. So there's the complete destruction, and a kind of an example of a decent draw point. I will, in the description, uh, post what I feel are kind of the Coles notes of this if it was too long for you. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd uh, love to do more how-tos. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe down below. Keep your sticks on the ice. Have a good time.